want to also ask you about Andrew Friedman. You mentioned him a couple times. You know him very well. And one thing I always want to ask, one thing I always want to figure out with Andrew Friedman, the way this organization goes about building their roster, goes about continuing to have sustainable winning, is what they do with their young players. Uh, you talk about a guy like Will Smith. They could easily have signed him to an extension. You talk about Julio Urias. He's a Boris guy. You're probably not going to see an extension with him. But they have not extended very many of these young players to these big multi-year deals that we're seeing with the Padres, with the Braves. I mean, the Braves have given out more extensions than your local hair salon. The Dodgers, they haven't done very much. What do you make of that, about Andrew Friedman's approach when it comes to retaining his young talent? I think you're also assuming, not maybe not, but you're also presuming that the, the player wants a long-term extension right now, too. I never fault the player for wanting to test the free agent market. I will always, always side with the player because if you think and I'm saying you as a collective, not you, Doug. But if you think that the player makes a lot of money for what they do, imagine what the owners are making, okay? So there, there are only 780 players in the world that get to start, are talented enough to start on an opening day roster. 780 players in the world, okay? So if you are that talented and that skilled at something that is so unbelievably hard to do, I think you would be foolish to not test the free agent market. That being said, I applaud the Atlanta Braves as to what they're doing. And again, they're signing these young guys to long-term deals that also does give them financial security. I'm not, I'm not dismissing what the Braves are doing. And now you're starting to see it with the guardians. You're starting to see it with some other teams too, some of the smaller market teams. But if I'm Will Smith and I'm paying attention to my numbers and I guarantee you, he may not be, but his agent is, he is one of the best catchers in major league baseball. So do you want to stay in LA long-term? Maybe I would, but I love LA. You know, do you want to stay in long-term and, and, and lock something up right now? Or do you want to have the right to, to see what else is out there? I, I don't think for one second that Justin Turner did not want to finish his career in LA. I think he really did. But you also have to remember that this is a business and uh, you know, maybe it's an agency thing. Maybe it is a Boris thing. Maybe it's like, you know, that you're not going to sign a long-term extension of Scott Boris is your agent. And you're definitely going to going to be a free agent. Um, you know, that hasn't necessarily been the Dodgers mantra ever uh, to, to lock up young guys for a long time. I don't think it's just in the, in the Friedman era. I think, I mean, I can't remember. I just saw today Ian Happ got a three year, yeah. like $36 million extension. Yeah. Um, so it's not something that the Dodgers do often. Um, you know, again, I'm not privy to those conversations that Andrew Friedman is having with, with the agents, um, but that's just not something that they do, but they also don't have to, they're a huge market and people want to play in LA. So if it's not going to be, if it's not going to be Will Smith, which I hope it is, because he's one of the best out there, um, it will be another high quality caliber catcher. Um, it's just, it's just a different type, type of business plan, I guess, if you will. And remember the Atlanta Braves are one of one of the only teams in major league baseball that have like shareholders and, you know, have to answer to the public with, you know, the, the profit and loss sheets at the end of the year. Um, so again, things are different. They're just run. They're two differently run organizations. Yeah, no, I love those points. The one that a lot of players want to play in Los Angeles. And yes, it's always on the player. I just think a guy like Will Smith, maybe could sign to like a, a five year, $150 million deal to buy out some of those arbitration years. But yeah, I think you made the best point in that you also have the ability to sustain this winning and what some of these other franchises don't have is they don't have the player development they don't have the farm system the Padres their last homegrown all-star on offense was Tony Gwynn their last homegrown all-star as a pitcher was Jake Peavy so it's been a while so when you have that talent coming up through the pipeline the Dodgers know that you want to maintain that flexibility so I just want to ask you I, mean, about I, think, I, I think you nailed it I mean I think that's such a good point that I didn't even I didn't even bring up I mean I don't think we can quantify we're talking about the loss of, of Tyler Anderson as far as like a, a guy that you can count on every fifth day to, to go out there and shove. I don't think we can quantify the loss of Gavin Lux. I really don't. I mean, this guy was primed to take over the, the starting shortstop for the Los Angeles Dodgers, something that he even said in his emotional, po you know, emotional post-surgery press conference that, um, you know, you, you dream of being the Los Angeles Dodgers shortstop. And I don't think we can, not that Miguel Rojas isn't a quality player and God love him for saving Kershaw's no hitter. Um, but I think, you know, as a utility player and as a guy that can give other guys a blow, Miguel Rojas is perfect. 
having to have Miguel as your everyday shortstop and losing the talent of what Gavin Lux was turning into at that time is a huge loss to this team. And that just brings up how I remember when Gavin Lux was drafted, you know, when he came to the stadium um, for the first time and, and those types of things. I actually remember watching him play in high school ball in, in Wisconsin because I used to cover Anyway, it doesn't matter. I, I lived in Wisconsin when my first jobs was there. So, you know, it, it's it's a huge loss, but you're right. The farm system is so deep. This is this is one of the few teams in Major League Baseball that can continue to reload, not rebuild, continue to reload every single year and not have to absolutely deplete their farm system to do it. There's such a fine balance of being able to play at a high level at the big league level and not completely wipe out your farm system to get, a, you know, to, to get a Mookie bets over to get whatever it's going to take to get these guys over. You still can, can bring up really high level prospects. You're in and you're out. You're not giving up, not giving away the moon. Remember why everybody was thinking Julio Arias was going to get traded before yeah. he got called up, Yep. you know, and now he's the ace of the staff. Um, and, and how many times have they been to the postseason? How many times have they been to the World Series? Um, you know, so again, that, that's a testament to the scouting and the development um, and, and the keen eye of what, you know, prospects are really valued at. And um, there's just so many puzzle pieces. And I, I just think they do a good job of, of mixing and matching those pieces. But no, so yeah, you, you mentioned some of these young players and you were present. And you saw this core come up, the Corey Seegers, the Cody Bellingers, the Will Smiths, the Walker Buehlers. They were that youth movement that went on to go to multiple World Series. They won a World Series title. Now you ushered in this new era of young Dodger talent with James Alvin, Miguel Vargas, Gavin Stone, Ryan Pepio. Do you see this as a potential youth movement that can be those stars like they were? Or do you think that's kind of unfair to expect them to do what those guys did? Well, I hate I hate comparing draft classes to draft classes or eras to completely different eras or a group of guys to, you know, the 2016 class to this. I don't think that's fair. And also, to be fair, I'm not around these new crop of guys like I was with the Seegers and the Petersons and the Bellies and the Buellers and the Will Smith. So I have a much more, I think, fair sense of that group of people than I do for this. It's not fair for me not being around them and seeing how they go about their business and getting to know them as, as men and players to compare. I, I obviously think they're incredibly talented. And again, it goes back to the, the scouting department that we talked about. It goes back to the farm system. It goes back to, you know, not having to bring guys up too quickly because they, they do have a very good plan for these guys of not rushing them because they have so much talent at every level of the organization. Um, but I can tell you that that group of Peterson and Seeger and, you know, Walker Bueller um, was incredibly, incredibly special. And I remember when Seeger and Peterson came up and I remember we were in Anaheim. It was for the, uh, the freeway series before the season started. And I remember taking a picture of those two together by the bat rack. And I was like, this is the future of this team. You know, and the same thing with Bellinger and I remember Bueller coming up and he was already the Bueller that we know, like with the, the arrogance, the confidence, but the, the, the stuff to shove and, and the way to, you know, to back up that stuff and to see what they've all turned into and what they've all become, um, not only just as players, but in, in their personal life has been very fulfilling. And I remember this year when I saw a picture of Seeger in a Rangers uniform talking to Belly in a Cubs uniform, I was like, what? This is like the Twilight Zone. I mean, it was, it was crazy when all of them were together. And, you know, there was a year, I want to say in the off season of 16 into 17, like six guys got married. Like it was just a weird, like everything they did, they did it together. And just seeing them grow up and perform so well and go to so many post seasons. And for the most part, all those guys, you know, in 2020 winning the world series together and stuff was incredibly special. So it's not fair for me to, to, uh, compare the new group to the old group but obviously um if you're at the big league level with the dodgers you're doing something right yeah no i agree i just think that group was so talented it was a moment in time you talked about yeah the off season eight of those guys got married here the dodgers were originally called the bridegrooms at one point so it did make a lot of sense but i want to ask you about cody bellinger because cody bellinger at what point we were talking about is he gonna get signed a 200 million dollar contract is he headed to cooperstown and, and he won an mvp rookie of the year a multi-time all-star and eventually he gets non-tendered by the Dodgers, ends up with Chicago. Just kind of what's your thoughts on Cody Bellinger and do you think he's going to turn around in Chicago? I think Cody Bellinger um, 
had so much anticipation and pressure on him. And again, it's how you perform in those moments, right? If you can, if you can work your way through that, um, it just kind of separates the great from the good. And I don't think Cody Bellinger still is the same as he was before he jacked up that shoulder. Um, I think he, you know, he will get there. And what happens is, is you're trying to compensate when you're physically not able to do a certain thing and your mechanics get all of whack and then the results suffer and then your mind suffers. So I think it's, it's a process, you know, everybody wants Cody again to be the, the 2000, he won it in 17, right. Or yeah. Uh, yeah MVP in 17. Um, you know, he wants, everyone wants him to be like that. What I love about Cody, and again, he's a, he's a Boris client. So, and I, and I love Scott, but what I love about Cody is that he bet on himself. He didn't necessarily, he didn't have to take a, a one-year deal with the Cubs. He could have signed a multi-year deal someplace, but he knows that he's not going to garner what he normally would based on the, the series and he was coming off of. And I think that Cody needed, I know it's a cliche and you need a change of scenery and stuff, but Cody doesn't, you know, he's not the type of guy he's like Seager. They don't like attention. They don't want to be the man. They just want to go to the, the ball. I mean, Cody's a very simple kid. You know, he just wants to go to the ballpark and play baseball and go home and be with his kids. Like he's not a, he's not a, a, a seeker of attention. Um, and I think, you know, the injury and the performance subsequently killed him mentally. I think it really, really bothered him. And it, this game is hard and everyone's piling on. And um, I, I really do. I think he's going to get back to 2017 MVP Cody Bellinger. I don't know. Do I think he's going to sign a $200 million deal? Probably not, but I think he'll have a, a long career, um, a lucrative career, maybe not the career we initially thought, but again, we're the ones putting pressure on these people. You know, um, I think Cody's going to be just fine. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, he's a guy that has just not looked the same since that injury really sapped him of his power, but you've heard hitters like Adrian Gonzalez, Matt Kemp. They say it takes multiple years to get back on track and get in sync. And I agree with you. A change of scenery is what was best, but we're going to get you out on a rapid round. Going to switch gears. I'm calling this rapid round once a lot of time in Hollywood. Questions about your time covering the Dodgers. Some season predictions mixed in here. You ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. Let's go. All right. Favorite ballpark to visit that was in Dodger Stadium? ANC Park in Pittsburgh. Who was the funniest Dodger in your time covering the team? Oh, man. Rich Hill is sneaky funny. Well, I thought you going to say Kike. I like the Rich Hill, though. Dick yeah. Mountain. But what would well, you... Kike is, Kike is outwardly funny. Rich uh, Hill is sneaky funny. I love it. I love it. Can you, any funny stories? Any any quick Rich Hill I mean, funny he would stories? just like when we, flew, when we flew from city to city, I mean, he would just get on the, the plane intercom and just like just do some not for um, public... Uh, announcements on the plane. He's just a, he's a really like, he's a thoughtful guy in interviews, but he's, 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 he's crazy funny. Awesome. The next one, what was the best perk of being the Dodgers reporter? Being able to cover one of the greatest franchises in the world, running into people uh, that are legends in the game, um, living in one of the greatest cities in the world, and 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 honestly, like being relevant, covering a team that is relevant um, was a lot of fun. It was it was I was very fortunate to to cover that team that is you know incredibly good every single year and a team that people care about because people cared about you too as the, as the reporter and you just become a part of their family. So I miss that tremendously. Which of the Dodgers would you not have allowed to babysit your kids? Jock Peterson. <laughs> okay, if you were in a bar fight, which two Dodgers would you have wanted by your side? Austin Barnes and Puig. Okay, you're on a road trip. You can pick two Dodgers. Who are you rolling with? Oh, it depends on what kind of road trip and what are we doing? I mean, are we going out to dinner? Or are we like going to a water park? Like, what are we doing? Everything, I mean, there's, there's so many parks. Um, two Dodgers I'd want by my side. Oh man, that's tough. Um, Chase Utley and David Freeze. Chase Utley and David Freeze. Okay. What was your favorite memory that wasn't the Dodgers winning the World Series in 2020? Um, Clayton Kershaw's no hitter at Dodger uh, Stadium. Yes. Still probably got some gator on you from that, right? <laughs> yeah. Those shoes are ruined. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, of course, you're covering the Dodgers, a lot of famous people. Who's the most famous person in your phone, Alana? Oh, in my in, phone, in your, in your Brad contacts. Paisley. Brad Paisley, can you FaceTime him right now? No, I'm just playing with you. Okay. He's in, uh, he's in the Ukraine, so no. <laughs> He's in Ukraine right now, so no, I, I don't think I can FaceTime him. <laughs> okay, so let's get you on a couple of quick predictions. Who's going to win the NL Cy Young? Oof, NL Cy Young? 
I'm going to say Sandy again. Go on, Sandy. Who's going to win NL MVP? Brother. James um, Altman. Oh, my gosh. NL MVP. Machado. Ooh, I like that pick. And that transitions me to my next question. Are the Dodgers going to win the NL West? No. Uh, by one by like a couple games though i don't think they win it but i think they, they're in the postseason as a wild card it's gonna be the, Ro- it's gonna be the rockies right <laughs> uh, <laughs> i wouldn't go that far but i i don't think i don't think it's the Dodgers. okay let me get you out on this one give me your world series prediction alana you're on the money you picked the astros you were 100 okay. on the money last time uh, i'm gonna you know you're not gonna like this either but i'm gonna go with the mets and the blue jays the Mets and the Blue Jays. I like the Blue Jays as a sneaky pick. And who's winning? Well, if the Mets get there, that means that they have a closer again. Um, oh, God. They haven't won since 86. The Blue Jays. Oh, I hate. I loathe predictions. Um, <laughs> You're good at them, though. I'm going to go with the Blue Jays. Going with the Blue Jays. Well, Alana, we appreciate the time. Join us here on Dodgers Dugout on the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. You, of course, can follow Alana on Twitter and Instagram. Catch your Monday through Friday on MLB Network's High Heat. Thanks, as always, Alana, and have a great season. 